All right, what's up guys? So today we're going to be talking about the Sony 85mm 1.4 G Master versus the Sony 85mm 1.8 lens. Um, both are two great options from Sony, one being the more expensive professional version, one being the little bit more budget consumer version. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts on whether the more expensive version is worth it for professionals or should we save money and get the cheaper one instead. So let's get straight into it. This is a go big or go home comparison between two 85 millimeter options for the Sony FE system. So I'm gonna kick off the comparison talking about price. The Sony 85mm 1.8 lens comes in at 798 CAD on Amazon.ca, whereas the 85mm 1.4 G Master comes in at $2,399, again that's CAD on Amazon.ca, which means the G Master is three times the price, which is definitely a huge difference. And we'll see how much better it is, or if it even is better than the 85mm 1.8. There's been a lot of conflicting reports and reviews online, so I'm going to get to the bottom of image quality and which one is actually worth it for your hard-earned money. And again, big thanks to Sony Pro Support for loaning out these lenses. Personally, I own the 85mm 1.8 since it's the only lens I could afford at the moment, but I really wanted to know if I had the money, would I get the G Master or would I be better off just sticking with the 1.8 version. All right, so I'm gonna talk about build quality next. So the 85 millimeter 1.8 is built pretty well. Um, there's really no complaints. For those looking for a lightweight option that's a little bit smaller, definitely the 1.8 fits the bill. However, you know, it's lacking weather sealing, it's lacking a really solid manual focus ring, it's lacking the aperture ring altogether. And yeah, it's just missing some of those kind of pro qualities that you would get with the G Master. So I wanna talk more about the manual focus ring. So like a lot of pro Sony lenses, um, the manual focus ring is actually direct drive. So no matter how fast or slow you turn it, the fly-by-wire system inside actually, you know, moves the focus in a linear fashion. So it's definitely a lot better. It definitely mimics a mechanical focus ring a lot better than some of the early Sony lenses, especially on the budget end of things. And, um, it makes a huge difference when you're working in video. There's a lot more confidence when you're trying to pull focus between two subjects. And I would say, yeah, for video workers, it's a huge advantage to go with the G Master just because of that way better manual focus ring. And of course, with the aperture ring, if you're adjusting aperture on the fly in video, you can de-click it so that you get those smooth kind of aperture pulls. And um, yeah, it's just not so jarring. You don't get those clicks throughout the aperture range and it's a lot better for video. Otherwise, both these lenses have autofocus manual focus switches as well as a focus hold button, which is really nice on the 1.8 as it's the only one of the budget lenses that actually comes with both those switches. So a really big bonus feature for that one. I'm really hoping that Sony continues to put both those switches on all of their budget line of lenses. And as I said before, um, the G Master is weather sealed, which makes a big difference for those that want to shoot a lot in the rain. However, you know, the Sony A7 bodies aren't exactly the most weather sealed bodies on the planet. So, you know, full discretion. I have shot in rain quite a bit. I haven't really noticed an issue with the 1.8 version or any of the cheaper Sony lenses. So, you know, keep that in mind. If it was a torrential downpour, I definitely even wouldn't trust the Sony A7 bodies. That's why I have uh, rain covers for all of my cameras. But um, yeah, the G Master is weather sealed, which would definitely make a difference if you're shooting in harsh conditions all of the time. Okay, so onto the AF test. So once again, I've set one light really close to the camera and one light a lot further from the camera, and I'm just auto-focusing between the two subjects, uh, both in photo and in video, and just comparing the two when it comes to speed and accuracy and just kind of how it responds. So in photo, I didn't actually see too much of a difference. The G Master is a touch slower and you can just tell the movement is a little bit slower. Um, the accuracy is just about the same. So once it hits, it hits. And I've actually found on the G Master, the autofocus accuracy to be very good. So once it thinks it's in focus, it is really in focus. You don't really see any hunting or any weird movements. 
Um, in video, however, the G Master is way slower. Um, it's a huge difference in video. And I would say for, you know, if you need a speedy lens to keep up with fast moving objects, I'd definitely say the 1.8 would do a better job. However, the G Master, you know, isn't too slow and would probably keep up for most subjects, especially in kind of like a wedding environment. So let's move on to look at flares with both these lenses. So the G Master actually looks a little bit worse at um, both wide open and at F10. So at wide open, um, the G Master is just having a little bit more flare, a little bit more reduction in contrast. And in the corners, you see a little bit more like those kind of blobs that are forming in the corners and the outside areas. And then if you turn the camera all the way to 90 degrees to the light source, you actually see this kind of odd flare popping into the frame. So definitely the G Master is worse at reducing flares. However, the caveat is um, the flares are quite beautiful. And I found in the real world, you're actually getting a lot of really beautiful flares and you know, it kind of does add something to the image. Whereas the 1.8 just kind of reduces all the flares. And when you see them, they're a little bit more clinical, they're kind of purple and green and just not very nice. And um, I found the G Master to look quite a bit better in that regard. Once you stop down the lens, um, the 1.8 has a little bit more distinct shapes when it comes to its flare. So you're seeing like distinct blobs of purple or green, whereas the G Master is a little bit more diffused. However, in the corners, uh, the G Master is still flaring a little bit worse than the 1.8. And, you know, I'd have to give the win to the 1.8 in this test. All right, so let's move on to the landscape test. So just like my other videos, um, this is, you know, identical shots at this building that's off in the distance and you know the building's just set against the sunset so you're going to see lots of aberrations um, we're going to see if there's any reduction in contrast we're going to see sharpness all the way up to the edges and we're also going to be able to see if there are any um, focal plane shifts if there's any decentering if there's any um, field curvature anything like that and um, yeah we'll just jump straight into the image so we have the 85 millimeter 1.8 on the left here denoted in red and we have the G master on the right denoted in blue and if we jump straight into the image we're gonna see much better sharpness with the G master so even at 1.4 we're seeing a lot better sharpness kind of all the way through the building here aberrations also looking a little bit cleaner on the on the G master and to be honest when I was looking at these images at the beginning, I was really surprised by how soft the 85 1.8 looked. Um, I'm thinking at this point that my copy is a little bit decentered. Um, it seems that the focal plane is kind of, you know, majorly shifted on this copy, and it really comes out in these landscape applications. So this left side is completely soft. Um, yeah, just not seeing any sharpness here. However, Right here, this West Coast Automotive is completely sharp, whereas on here with the G Master, it's completely soft. So I'm thinking the focal plane is just kind of a little bit more diagonal. Um, it seems like the right front side here is completely sharp, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, other than I think this copy is a little bit decentered because obviously when I'm doing these tests, focusing, manual focusing on the building right in the center of the image. So considering that the focal plane does this kind of diagonal shape, I think that it's just decentered and um, I think I have a bad copy. So keep that in mind with this landscape test. Um, the results aren't 100% accurate because of that decentering and I'm gonna kind of dance around that fact and still come up with some results that are useful, such as, you know, aberrations, and how these lenses clean up inside their sharp areas. So one big thing of note, if you just look at the G Master on this side, is that it is super sharp from corner to corner at 1.4, and it's actually really impressive. So this building, even at 1.4, all the way out to the edge is completely sharp. You know, the 1.8 not looking too bad over here either, but it is a huge difference. I mean, this G Master really just showing great levels of sharpness great levels of aberration reduction. And it's just resolving all this kind of fine detail through this building. 
it's just really really impressive even all these cables up here it's just looking fantastic so big advantage to the g master when it comes to landscape applications and um, as we'll see kind of later on whether it's really close up to the camera or really far away in landscape applications the g master just really holds its sharpness at all aperture values and that's um you know something that you're paying for with that twenty four hundred dollars all right, so let's just jump up to F2, where I just want to show how much the 85 1.4 G Master has sharpened up. So the aberrations are almost completely gone. The G Master doing a really good job of this, and it is just razor sharp all the way from edge to edge. Absolutely no issues at all with the G Master. It's looking fantastic. And here we are at 2.8, where I'd say the image is pretty darn close to perfect. So no problems at all with the G Master. At 2.8, I'd say no aberrations and razor, sh razor sharp from corner to corner. So it's looking fantastic. Again, with the 1.8, it's looking really soft, but I'm pretty sure that's due to the decentering. If we come over here to where the image is sharp, you know, it's looking really good over here as well, all the way down to the corner. And the aberration is not looking too bad on the 1.8 either. So I think with a good copy, you'd be seeing much better results. And one interesting thing of note, I think that these smaller Sony budget lenses actually do a lot better once you stop down past F8. So at a F11 or F16, um, they suffer from diffraction a lot less than the Pro 1.4 lenses. So you know, if you mainly shoot at f11, f16, you really want those crazy uh, sun stars or you're mainly just a landscape shooter, you know, keep that in mind. You know, you're getting actual better quality from those 1.8 lenses in those types of scenarios. So if we jump in here, you know, we're looking at the scaffolding here, the 1.8 looks a little bit sharper. If we look at the building, same thing. And just kind of all throughout the image, you're going to see a little bit more contrast, a little bit more bite from the 85 1.8. And just a little bit of softness coming from the G Master. So yeah, pretty interesting. And it's something that has been consistent with pretty much all the lenses. So the 50 millimeter, same kind of thing, as well as the 85. And I think it's just due to, you know, the size of the lens elements, the size of the apertures, and kind of how those work in relation of each other um, when you stop down the lens. All right, so I'm gonna jump to the AF tracking test for both these lenses. Here we have the 85 1.8, so I'm gonna zoom into 100%. And as we go through these, um, 85 millimeter 1.8 is doing a great job. It's keeping track of the focus throughout the entire run. And really not a whole lot to complain about here. It's keeping up. It's either tracking jackets or faces. Um, and yeah, for an 85 millimeter lens, I mean, at eight frames a second, you can't really complain with this kind of performance. Still keeping up. And even right to the end of the run, so that's the last photo here. They're actually really close to the camera at this point. And yeah, still track and focus. So. You know, extra bonus points to the 1.8 um, during the tracking test. It did fantastic. All right, so this is a G Master. So as I said before, it has a little bit of a slower focus motor, but let's how it, see how it does in the tracking test. So again, at 100%, we're going through these. And so far, it's keeping up. Looking good. Still going. And yeah, it looks like it's keeping up very well. And you can kind of see how with the 1.8, um, it managed to keep track on Isla, so in the front of the subject as they were running towards the camera. With the G Master, it tended to shift more towards Lex, who was in the back. So I think, you know, that's due to just a little bit of a slower motor, so it can't keep up, especially in those close distances. Um, and I believe it loses it completely right near the end, but the next time it catches up. So a little bit worse performance, and then right at the end it loses it one more time. 
so yeah a little bit worse performance from the G Master however you know if you don't shoot running subjects too much at the time it should be good enough for most situations and I think for wedding photographers it wouldn't really be a big deal at all so definitely one thing to point out with these images is just the extra level of softness that comes out of the G Master image. So if we pop into both of these, there's the G Master here on the right and the 1.8 on the left. And you can see how much just cleaner the G Master background is. Um, there's just a lot of textures here that kind of pop in. You're seeing these kind of like big circles that are defined in the 1.8 image and it's just super soft and blurred out on the G Master. So again, just really up to you whether that's worth three times the price or not. I think it really depends on how you shoot and what you look for inside of an image. If you shoot wide open all the time, you might think the G Master bump and image quality is really worth it. If you're you know, more the type of shooter that has really clean lighting, maybe uses flash a lot more, stops down the lens a lot more, um, the 1.8, you know, could have really good image quality too. So it depends on what you look for in a lens and depends kind of what you value, what you want to spend your money on. But we're definitely going to get into more specific tests and we're going to look at kind of close focus and, you know, a little bit more busy background scenarios. Okay, so on to the close focus tests. So we have the G Master image on the left here shooting the Sony Zeiss 35. And we have the 1.8 image on the right shooting the Rokinon 35. So this is shot at minimum focus distance. So as close as I possibly could get the lens to the subject. And yeah, we just shot, shot some images at all apertures and we're gonna look through some of the results. So wide open, um, we're seeing a little bit of fringing coming from the G Master. Um, the 1.8 looking a little bit better. However, if we're looking at this area here on the manual focus rings, I would say the G Master looks a little bit sharper. And as we come down here towards the logo, I think the G Master still looks significantly sharper and the 1.8 has some fringing on the littering there. Um, one thing I really noticed throughout all these tests is how much sharper the G Master is in the corners. So you can kind of see here just how kind of blurred out the texture of the paper is. However, on the G Master, it's really nice and sharp, even wide open all the way out in the corner. So I'm gonna keep coming back to that because it really is a pattern that I noticed with both these lenses. When it comes to out of focus circles, uh, the G Master, you know, living up to his name is gonna have those really rounded bokeh balls. And that's because of the 11 aperture blades um, the huge image circle, you know, all the benefits of having such a large lens. Um, you're definitely seeing those really, really round bokeh circles. However, there's a little bit of fringing, although at full screen it's not too bad. Um, you know, I'd say both these lenses producing really smooth bokeh balls. So the centers are really nice and smooth. There's no real textures that I'm seeing in either of them. And yeah, overall, just a little bit more oval shape for the 1.8 and really nice and round for the G Master. All right, so bumping up to F2, and I just want to point out just how round all the bokeh balls are on the G Master. So again, just like with the 50mm lens that I tested before, both lenses go down to 1.4 and they perform really well at 1.4. But because they go down to 1.4 um, at F2, you're already getting that one stop improvement of image quality and they're like perfect at f2 so there's like zero issues at f2 there's no aberrations the bokeh balls are completely circular and perfect the sharpness is impeccable and these lenses perform amazing at like f2 um, the 1.8 lenses though because you're barely stopping down between 1.8 and f2 they barely see that kind of image quality improvement at f2 so f2 we'll go into the middle here so all those fringing artifacts are gone on the G Master. Looking at really, really sharp images now. You're really getting that bite to all the textures here on the lens. And again, even sharper out to the sides here and really sharp right to the corners. Whereas the 1.8 is just a little bit soft. So really good results from the G Master. 
And here we are at f2.8, and I just kind of want to point out something that's a little bit odd. So from f2 and up, the 1.8 lens actually has bigger bokeh balls than the G Master does. And I'm not really sure why, um, but I did see that to be consistent between all the tests. So at f from f2 and up, um, the 1.8 lens produces bigger bokeh balls than the G Master. But if we zoom into both these images, uh, both are really nice and sharp. And the 1.8 does really well from uh, f2.8 and up. And jumping to f16, both these lenses really sharp. Um, you're not really seeing that softness and diffraction that we were seeing in the landscape test from the G Master. It's looking really good at f16. And even right out to the corners, the texture of the paper, just definitely a lot better than it is on the 1.8 version. However, both lenses are doing really well and both performing really well for a close focus test. All right, so onto the busy bouquet test. So once again, um, you just have this really complex scene underneath the tables and I focused really nice and close up in the top right and went through the aperture range at that uh, focus distance. Then I'm focused in the middle of the image, a little bit further away, again, went through all the apertures. And then I focused at the back and went through all the apertures again, just to kind of see what would come up, what kind of image quality problems would come up and just which lens would look better in this scenario. So we're going to start with the close focus up in the top right corner. And just like I kind of mentioned before, um, this is why you're paying three times the price with the G Master is because all the way out in the corners at 1.4 in this really you know difficult scenario the g master is still resolving like really good sharpness even wide open at 1.4 um, you can see there's just way more texture um, really good sharpness and not a whole lot of aberrations whereas on the 1.8 um, it's really struggling to resolve kind of any textures in here everything has a slight blur to it and the aberration is just a little bit stronger. You know, even on this cable, just looks pretty blurry, whereas it's really nice and sharp on the G Master. Uh, one thing I noticed coming down to this cable here is that the both the G Master and the 1.8 have similar levels of aberrations. However, the G Master is red and blue in its aberrations, and the 1.8 version is green and purple. Um, typically, I really like green and purple fringing a lot better because when you get rid of it, um, it doesn't affect lip color or skin color in the subject. So something interesting to note, um, it might be important to you, it may not be. But for me, at least wide open, I would say that the 1.8 aberrations are a little bit easier to take care of. But this is just in one scenario. Um, we'll look at different scenarios where the G Master has better aberration control. All right, so going down to F2, and we can already see that the G Master's aberrations are clearing up quite a bit. So definitely a lot lower levels. And the sharpness of the G Master is still a lot better all the way on the corner. If we go down to 2.8, G Master is basically free of aberrations at this point, just a tiny little bit in the cables. And over here, we're seeing like perfect levels of sharpness all the way in the corner, whereas the 1.8 still struggling to resolve any sort of detail in the corner. And once again, aberrations almost completely gone on the G Master. And let's just jump to F11 to see how we're doing in terms of flaring. And you know, the G Master, just a bit of a blob there. And the 1.8 just has kind of like a big um, zone here that's losing a little bit of contrast. And in terms of over here, we're seeing a lot more color out of the 1.8 and a lot less out of the G Master. So overall, I'd probably say, you know, the G Master is handling a little bit better, but um, the 1.8 also doing a pretty good job here as well. And I just want to note the sharpness levels on the 1.8 still in the corners, not really reaching very good levels of sharpness. However, the G Master is insanely sharp all the way out in the corner at f11. All right, so moving to the medium focus distance and the 1.8 is doing a lot better, probably because the subject isn't all the way out, out in the corners. And yeah, we're just we're seeing pretty good levels of sharpness here on the 1.8, but 
but definitely better levels of sharpness on the G Master. Um, once again, similar levels of aberration. We're seeing just as much blue as I am seeing green. However, the bokeh is a lot bigger and softer and rounder on the G Master than it is on the 1.8. Um, in terms of aberrations, both lenses doing pretty well on the subject. Maybe a hint more purple on the 1.8 image than on the G Master. Overall, both lenses resolving the image pretty darn well. So once again, let's bump up to f2. And here we see the G Master cleaning up quite well. Um, no real aberrations on the subject here. Just maybe a little bit of purple there. We're seeing still a lot of blue in the bouquet, but the circle's looking very nice and round now, whereas the 1.8 still quite um, has that cat eye shape. All right, so once again, let's jump up to F11. Um, we're seeing that same flare come up with the G Master, but other than that, pretty clean in the whole image. And we're seeing just a little bit more color and loss of contrast coming out of the 1.8. We're seeing this kind of discoloring kind of throughout this diagonal here. Um, I think there's a little bit of blob there, a little bit of green here. And on the G Master, it's actually just over here. We're seeing some color and then that big circle right there. So I definitely say the G Master handling the flaring and aberrations a little bit better. Um, in terms of sharpness, you know, both lenses doing really well here. Um, no fringing aberrations anywhere to be found. And, you know, I'd say the G Master, definitely a lot sharper on this cable. And all the way up to the corners, I'd say it's sharper on the G Master as well. All right, so the far focus test in this scene, um, I just focused on the pole here out in the back. And once again, we're seeing much better levels of sharpness from the 1.4 than we are at the 1.8. We're seeing similar levels of aberration, just with different colors for both lenses. And if we actually jump out to the sides here in the corner, the um, G Master looks very similar to the 1.8. So it still has that cat eye bokeh, um, similar levels of fringing. Yeah, just looking quite similar. I'm a little bit surprised by that. But otherwise, not a whole lot of things to note. And we're gonna jump up to F2 now. Where as usual, the G Master is sharpening up quite a bit, whereas the 1.8 version is not. And we're just seeing how much more aberrations are coming out of this 1.8 lens. Um, whereas the G Master at F2, cleaning up quite a bit, which is consistent with the other tests as well. All right, and we'll jump up to F16, where we see uh, the flaring control on the 1.8 to be quite a bit worse. So we're seeing this big flare coming right through the image there. And while we see a similar flare on the G Master, um, I would argue that it's dealing with it a little bit better. Um, there's a little bit more contrast in this image around the flare, and we're not seeing quite so many shapes come into the center here. But, you know, by no means does is the 1.8 flare that bad. Um, I would say it's doing pretty well considering the price. And um, yeah, compared to the Rokinon 35 that I was comparing before, this Sony 85 is doing a really good job with its flare. All right, so let's move on to this aberration test where I'm shooting this piece of paper at a variety of apertures and we're just gonna see how both lenses handle the aberrations. Um, we're at 1.8 here on the left and 1.4 here on the right. I'm gonna jump in and it looks like the G Master is handling aberrations a little bit better. A little bit more purple here on the left than there is on the right and it's a little bit more green here than blue here. So I'd say the G Master's handling a little bit better. Okay, jumping up to F2, and the G Master is cleaning up quite a bit, um, really losing all of its color in the text here, whereas the 1.8 still has quite a bit of purple and quite a bit of green. So G Master cleaning up quite a bit, it's definitely pulling ahead. And if you jump up to 2.8, I'd say the G Master is completely clean now not really seeing any coloring in any of the letters. However, the 1.8 still seeing some green, still seeing some purple. And the 1.8 still struggles with aberrations all the way up to F5.6, where I'd say it becomes as clean as the G Master. So the G Master definitely winning in this test. Um, it cleans up at F2, F2.8, it's basically perfect. 
whereas the 1.8 it takes until like f5.6 f8 until you see it being quite clean in these close-up tests okay so here's another chromatic aberration test so we have the g master on the left here and the 1.8 on the right and we're just shooting this tree so it's lots of complex textures we got a lot of foreground a lot of background and a lot of fine details to resolve so we're just going to jump into the image and see how both these lenses do and straight off the bat i would say i'm seeing a little bit more purple coming out of the 1.8 than i am from the g master um, although to be fair i'm seeing a little bit more green coming out of the g master than on the 1.8 um, big takeaway from this test though especially wide open is how sharp the corners are on the g master and how soft they are on the 1.8 so we're seeing just quite a bit of softness there, whereas on the G Master, it's really nice and sharp. And again, if we jump up to F2, we're gonna see much better levels of sharpness from the G Master, where it really starts to clean up. And on the 1.8, we're not seeing too much of a difference. So in the corners, razor sharp. And if we jump up to F2.8, we're gonna see basically zero aberrations from the G Master. Um, we're still gonna see some from the 1.8. And this is where I'd say the G Master is pretty much perfect when it comes to image quality. So zero aberrations, perfect sharpness all the way to the corners. And yeah, that's pretty consistent across all sorts of tests with the G Master. When it gets to F2, F2.8, it's razor sharp, zero aberrations, and zero imperfections. And if we go to F8, just to compare both these lenses, um, I'd say both are looking quite identical now. Um, you might see a little bit of difference in the in the extreme corners where the 1.8 is looking a little bit softer, but um, definitely not doing too bad at all. And keep in mind again, this copy might be a little bit decentered, so you might see some weird stuff in the corners. Um, trying to keep that in mind throughout all these tests. Unfortunately, I seem to have a bad copy, whereas the GM is looking pretty good. But I think in terms of sharpness inside the middle and in terms of aberrations, I still think it's a good representation of how this lens performs in the real world. All right, so I just did side-by-side -side headshots with Lex and both are wide open um, with some flash. So we jump into the middle here and we're actually gonna see a little bit better levels of sharpness coming out of the 85 1.8 than we are for the G Master over here. So we can see um, in the skin texture and the eye, just definitely a little bit sharper with the 1.8 lens. However, if you come down here, this is where you know the G Master really comes into a class of its own um, in the bokeh. So with the necklace here on the 85 1.8, you're gonna see a lot of bubbling that happens with the necklace um, when it's out of focus. Whereas on the G Master, it's completely smooth. So it's really nice and buttery smooth. Um, you're not seeing any kind of harsh shapes, especially when you're looking at the pendant there. Um, you're getting these weird kind of distracting shapes with the 1.8 and it's really nice and smooth with the G Master. Even the hair just looks a little kind of odd on the 1.8 where it looks almost um, like it has a texture of its own. Whereas on the G Master, it's really nice and smooth. And again with the shirt, so we're just seeing these kind of bubbly shapes coming out from the shirt and on the G Master, again, completely smooth and no real issues there. Again, if we stop the lens down to 5.6, um, all those differences kind of go away. So sharpness levels, I would say, are pretty identical now. Um, can't really see any difference between them. In terms of bokeh, both looking pretty similar. And if we come over here to the hair, yeah, looking pretty similar. And the shirt's looking similar as well. So all those differences, you know, they become pretty identical once you stop down to f5.6. However, if you shoot a lot of portraits wide open, you definitely see a lot more advantages coming out of the G Master. All right, so in conclusion, for professional photographers, I would definitely recommend the 85 millimeter G Master if you had the money to buy it. Um, I would say, you know, it's almost a perfect lens, like close-up applications in the corners, even at 1.4 is really nice and sharp. The backgrounds are buttery smooth 
and just have this really nice soft diffuse look um, you know landscape applications even at 1.4 completely sharp um, you know AF is maybe a touch slower but I would say in most applications it's fine um, flares maybe a little bit worse but as we saw with the busy bouquet test sometimes a little bit better and um, you know I'd say 85 90 percent of the time you're gonna think those flares look pretty artistic and um, actually add to the drama and ambience of the photo uh, the 1.8 though you know if you're taking portraits if you're taking headshots if you don't need critical sharpness and especially if you don't need sharpness in the corners I'd say the 1.8 lens is definitely a good buy um, even for wedding shooters like I've used the 85 1.8 on hundreds of weddings now and I don't have any problems with it. It's definitely good enough for like 95% of the shots that I take. That being said, if I had the money, I would definitely spring for the G Master just for that added image quality, um, the better build, the better manual focus ring, the better features, and just that peace of mind knowing that anything I throw at this lens is gonna be able to handle really well. Um, video shooters as well, you know, with that manual focus ring, with the aperture ring and um, I'm going to show you some examples of video now. So I was kind of running around with the gimbal with both the G Master and the 1.8. And you can really tell when the focus is shifting between the background and the subject that the G Master just looks way smoother. The backgrounds just kind of melt away into blur. And it just looks really natural on the G Master. On the 1.8, um, I think because the background's a little bit busier, when it's doing that uh, focus transition, it's just looking a little bit more kind of harsh, um, a little bit less natural, and um, I would definitely say the G Master is looking a lot better. And so for video shooters, I would definitely highly recommend the G Master lens. Um, really can't go wrong with that lens. If you can afford it, it's definitely worth the price. So to wrap it all up, um, you know, a lot of people might think the 1.8 is a great lens for the money and they'd be absolutely right. It really is a great lens for the money. But you know, the whole point of this series is to see if the expensive lens is actually worth it for me. And I would say in this case with the G Master, it definitely is. Uh, the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master is an amazing lens. Um, can really handle just whatever you want to throw at it. It resolves the image perfectly and I would say even at three times the price, you know, if you had the money to spend on it, go for it. You know, every lens that comes out nowadays is definitely going to be able to take a decent portrait in decent lighting and it's only in those like really extreme harsh conditions that you get what you pay for with the expensive lenses. So keep that in mind when you're buying things. You know, a lot of reviewers will recommend the cheaper lens just because it matches the image quality in real easy conditions. But, you know, I wanted to chuck these lenses into some harsh conditions to really see where the differences lie. So hopefully you appreciate that. Um, if you like this video, you know, give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. Um, check out some of our other videos, you know, I've tested the 35 Zeiss, the 50 Zeiss and put it up against uh, some of the budget counterparts as well. So check those videos out. Um, check out some of our other videos too and make sure you subscribe if you like what you see. Um, other than that, I have some affiliate links down below if you want to purchase either of these lenses or you just want to see any of the other gear that we use here at Lex and Josh. And next up, I've actually rented a bunch of the Sony G Master Zooms. So we got the 1635 2.8, the 2470 2.8, and the 7200 2.8. And I'm going to be putting them up against the 1635 f4, the Tamron 2875, and the 7200 f4 Zoom from Sony. So stay tuned for those, and I'll see you guys in the next one.